Hey guys and girls, I'm back. This is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games, and today I'm continuing on from the Pong tutorial series that I've been doing, and this today is now part seven. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has uh, given a message or commented on the videos, uh, and those of you who have helped sort of reply to other comments as well. This this really helps out because I don't have a huge amount of time to do the videos, and so you guys giving comments to other people and helping each other out really, really, really helps. So again, thanks very much for that. So I think it's been roughly uh, five or six days since I did the last video, but the last thing that we were doing was making the Pong game a little more pretty. So we added in some background particle effects, and I'm going to show you quickly here. So these sort of shards, we added these sparks when the ball hits the walls or the paddle. And I also showed you how to make a very basic material and how to apply a texture to that material. And that's what I, these walls at the moment are blue as opposed to how they were, uh, opposed to white as they were originally. So at the moment we're just focusing on the game scene, we're not focusing on the menu scene. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so, but in the meantime, let's continue on for on this, this uh, tutorial here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So today the things that we're going to do are, is we're going to make it again a little bit more interesting in terms of the visuals. And I'm also going to change this paddle at the bottom here so that it's a little more sort of, uh, I would say curved or has some more edges so that it's more like a, a pong paddle. Because right now as you play the game, the ball always goes in 45, at a 45 degree angle off every wall. Now that means that there's no random element in the game based on what the player does. It's always going to be 45 degrees and it's going to be the same every single time. So we want to add a little bit of um, a little bit of random randomization, if you want to call it that, to the game so that it's a little bit more interesting. So, okay. So the first thing is, um, okay, so let me, okay, so the first thing is we're going to make this background. So I'm going to click on game object, create other, and I'm going to use a cube. And I'm just going to make that at zero, zero. I'm tapping on the cube and then the X position and the Y position here and entering zero. This is inside the inspector area. Now holding down Alt, left click and just moving my mouse around, I can rotate around the scene. And moving my middle scroll button, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to move this cube back because it's going to be right in the background. And I'm just left clicking and dragging this yellow arrow here, this axis controller. And now tapping on R, I'm going to hold the middle uh, cube here and I'm going to drag, left drag this to make it larger. And this is going to cover the entire background. Okay. So that's great. The reason that I'm moving this to the background is that it is just a background scene object. This is, this is just to make it look more pretty and there's no kind of interaction here or anything. Okay. And since there's going to be no interaction with this cube, we don't need to tap it, we don't need to do anything with it, I'm going to remove this box collider here. So I'm going to click on this sort of I do a settings cog arrow, and then I'm going to click on remove component. And as you can see, the green box around that has gone now. The green box is basically a collider object, and that's how it's shown inside of Unity. So, But as we don't need it to be interactive, like say the score, for example, has no collider on it. We don't need it to bounce into anything and it doesn't need to be tapped. So if you ever don't need an object to have a collider, just remove it and then it makes the scene, the scene a little bit more efficient. Okay, so let me check my next point. Okay, so the, the other thing is uh, we need to make sure that the, the mobile standard assets are imported into your project. That comes free, and it came free with this with my build of Unity here, which is version 3.4. So just to make sure that it is imported, if you go to Assets, Import Package, and then if you go down to Standard Assets Mobile and click on that, it should pop up give you a list of things that are that need to be imported. Now I've already imported everything here, and so that's fine. I could just click X, but in this case, you guys would just click Import if it's not already imported. Okay. And once that's imported in your projects folder here, if you go there, you can see the standard assets mobile is available. And what we want to do is basically apply one of these grid materials onto this gray box here, because this is going to be our background, like a slidey kind of grid effect. So I'm, I'm very kind of Tron inspired. I love Tron. And so everything that I'm doing here is kind of Tron-ish. 
Uh, but the part of the reasons as well is that it's kind of basic graphics and everyone can do this and it allows us to do an easier tutorial and you guys can improve on that later. So I just want to check that that's my next step. So yeah, add grid material to the cube. So I'm going to just basically left hold this grid material and I'm going to drag it over there uh, onto the cube and let go. All right, so there we go. You could also just drag it down onto the cube here inside of the hierarchy, which is the same cube. Okay, so I think that looks kind of cool already. Right? It's kind of pong. It's kind of old school. It's it's a a basic kind of you know, retro style game. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is in in this one here. I actually did it in one of our other games called Temple Run Training, and have this grid sort of scroll down as things play. So if I just to demonstrate, if I click play right now. Uh, nothing's going to happen. This grid isn't going to move, so that's that's not too interesting. I actually want this grid to scroll, and part of the reason I want to do this is just to show you guys the animation editor as well. So if I click on Window, Animation, and this is basically the animation curve editor, and this window allows you to do a lot of interesting things with animation. You can move objects around the scene. It's a very that's the most basic thing. You know, move it from point A to point B over time. That's very simple. You can have things move in a curve. You can also change a lot of things like the uh, the alpha of a of a particular object so that it becomes transparent and then opaque over time. Uh, you can also have like sub animation. So if you have a character um, object and then you want its head to sort of bounce up and down and you want its arms to move sort of left and right like this, that's this is how you do it inside of the animation curve editor. And I've not used this a huge amount, but it's very very useful um, also for materials. So I'm just going to show you a basic a basic animation curve here. So if I go to this, just this area here, this sort of two arrows next to this cube uh, square, click on that, create new clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an animations folder. As you see, we haven't got any here. So I'm just going to click on an empty space here. I'm going to click new folder and I'm going to call this animation. Because animations are, they actually, when you make an animation, it creates an animation file. So it's useful to keep all of that in one place as well. You can put it anywhere, of course, but I like to keep this all in an animation folder. So I'm going to call this um, grid. Uh, what was the word that we can call it? I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting what we called it before. Uh, scroll. There we go. Grid scroll. Okay. So the parts like we can animate any part of this of this object here, and as you can see, these parts here, like the transform, the cube, the mesh renderer, the grid, and so on, they all match up to the different parts in the animator here. You can see the mesh renderer, the animation, which is the part that we're building now, the material. So we can change any of those parts using the animation editor. So let me just find this again. Window animation. The one that I want to change is the material. So I'm going to expand this down. And I'm going to go to main texture Y offset. I think that's the correct one. Okay. And I'm just going to left click on the time uh, section up here. So make it to zero. And I'm going to enter a keyframe. Now, I'm not doing a full animation tutorial here on how animation works inside of Unity. This is just, like we say, it's very hands on and just getting the game up and running. But I will do a separate video if anybody's interested on more techniques in animation and how to do that inside of Unity for basic 2D games. But for now I'm just going to click on add keyframe and as we can see here right now it's put in a small keyframe here which is a point in time which uh, which is kind of a starting point of what we want to change or what value we want to edit. And what I want to do is over the course of say half a second which is here, this is one second, this is zero seconds I'm going to add in another keyframe and I'm going to manually punch in the, the value here. So we clicked on offset Y. Right now, if you scroll, you can scroll left and right by holding the left mouse button and just moving along. Right now, there's no change, okay? But I'm going to click on here. I'm going to type on 1 and click enter. Okay? Now, if you see here, as I click left, as I scroll left and right on the animation editor, you can see the value down here offset Y is changing, which is exactly what we want. And if I click on play, there we go. Inside of the editor itself, we can see that animation scrolling, which is great. 
Okay, so just click off play. What we want to do is have this to loop around over and over. We don't want to play this just once. So I'm going to click on default down here. And this shows the type of animations. We can have it ping pong back and forth, or we can have it loop, or just play once. In this case, we're going to have it looped. Okay? That works well. So I can click off record. I can close the animation curve editor now. And as you can see what we've done here, whenever we click on window animation and we add a new animation clip, that's the part where we made a folder and then we made a file name, is it will add this animation component here automatically. And as you can see, we've also made the animation folder and here is the animation, this grid scroll, which is here. And if I click on it, it will highlight here inside of the project view. And one thing just to check guys is that play automatically is ticked. That means that when that object, the cube in this case, comes into the scene, this animation will automatically play. Okay. So I'm just clicking the file, save scene, save project, and that's just a habit that I have. I, I recommend you all do that. Click on play. And there we go, it scrolls, good. Uh, it's not, it's a little bit choppy, of course, because I'm using this uh, the screen capture software, but that looks a lot better than before. But to be honest, I don't like the, I don't think the, the background shards work, the sort of green and blue shards look very well. So I'm just gonna disable them. And you guys can do this or not. This is this is just a, a subjective art point that you guys can agree or disagree with. It's no problem. But I'm going to click on the particle system, which is this part, which is this blue and green shards. And I'm just going to click on this top part here, this top tick box, which disables it. Now you can delete it from the scene if you right click and then go delete. That's that's fine. But I like to keep them whilst I'm building a project. I like to keep the I like to keep things in the hierarchy and not delete them because I might change my mind later. If I delete this now, then I need to rebuild it later unless I make it a prefab and put it into the project view here. But in this case, it's just quick and easy to turn this off and then later, once the project is finished, I can optimize and just right click and delete it, okay? So if I click on play, there we go. So the, shard, uh, the blue and green shards are gone. And all we've got is the scrolling background and that's working just fine. Okay, cool. And as you say, you know, since we're doing an art thing, have a play around with the speed, play around with the size. You can make this cube bigger or smaller, if you like. Um, whichever kind of works for you. You can change the texture, of course. You don't have to use the grid texture. Whatever you think looks good. All right, so tiling, make 35 to 35. Okay, so what? I, just to demonstrate this is, uh, if you don't want to change the grid, grid size, what you can do is you can change the... Uh, for example, if this is one side of the grid, inside of that grid we have the grid texture which is repeated over and over and over because the grid texture itself, if I go here and click on textures and grid, we can see it's just a single cross so that needs to be repeated over and over and over to make the grid. Now we can make these grids bigger or smaller without changing the, the actual size of this cube itself. And I've already done this here, I've actually already changed the tiling, but if I click on cube and then go down to the grid material and I can expand or uh, I make that smaller. If I click on X and Y, what I can do is change that. So I'm just going to tap in 45 just for an example, click enter, click on play. And as you can see, the grids have gone a lot smaller now. So if you don't want to change the cube size, you don't have to. You can just change the grid size inside of the, the material part here, inside the inspector. Okay. So I already made these particle sparks blue as well because I thought these sparks here, this one was um, red, looked a little bit strange with this kind of theme that we were going for. So all I did inside of the sparks editor is I clicked on the sparks, I changed this to blue, and just to demonstrate, I'm going to change this to green and apply this to the prefab that we built in the previous video, I think it was. So right now I've changed this particle sparks to green, and just to demonstrate, if I click play, the ones that are in the game scene spark, but the ones on the side are still blue, okay? So what we need to do is find this particle sparks here inside the project, because when the ball hits the wall, it's making one of these particle sparks here inside the project view. It's not making this one here, because this one is like already in the game scene. So what we want to do is just left click, left click and drag it up on top of the one inside the project folder and let go. And that applies the changes to the prefab, okay? So it's very important. Make sure that whenever you change something inside the scene, 
that you're applying it to the prefab as well so that you can see the changes. And there we go, we've got green sparks all over the place. And that's cool.